men's suits and sport coats can be a higher ticket sale with a relatively low thrift store cost. A used suit was recently sold on eBay for over $5,000. More about that soon. Many sell in the hundreds to thousands, used. They are often ignored even by professional resellers because they are more work to list. It takes a bit of time to learn the differences between an average suit and a high-quality one. In this video we will share the tells that can make you thousands of dollars. Welcome to Thrift Retailer where we talk all things thrift. Today's episode is about finding treasure in men's suits. Using eBay's research tool with three filters, sold, completed, and used, uncovered over 7,600 units sold for over $100. That's just on eBay. Over 1,200 sold for over $300 and 150 plus sold for over $1,000. That's a good sized market to go after as thrift stores often sell these for around $10, maybe $20. My local Red Racks only had a couple dozen suits on a recent visit. There is an Armani easily valued at over $400. I bought it to sell. I'll do a post on that once it sells. It's also my size, so it may be hard to part with. Condition is super important. Think of the time someone is going to wear a suit bought secondhand. It's either to look good at work, for a meeting, a job interview, a family occasion, or an important life event. No one wants a pilly worn suit. Check out key areas for wear. Does it generally look good? Look at sleeve ends, pockets, and the bottom edge of the jacket. Is the lining intact and still properly stitched in place? Does it lay well when put on? If there are bubbles or uneven lines, it's not worth buying. Along the shoulder and top of the sleeve should have straight stitching and look clean. Are the buttons all there and do they match? Collar, armpits, are there sweat stains? Is the liner stitching all there and in good condition? Lapels, pockets and bottom of the coat look good. Do sleeve ends show wear or look like they have been lengthened or shortened? Does the lapel lay well without looking ironed in place? Better suits have a little roll at the bottom. Pockets in good shape with no holes. I have found pockets that are still sewn shut from the factory, a good sign. Is the stitching throughout even and straight, especially along the shoulder and top of the sleeve? Are brand and care labels still in place? Do the pant bottoms, pockets, belt line, and liner all look great? Is the styling fairly current? To me, the best place to stay on top of that is visiting department stores or websites to see what is in. Lapel width and depth seem to be the thing that changes the most. Overall, would you wear it to a formal occasion or happily next to someone wearing it? I suggest only considering suits that look new or almost new. If a suit is in good condition the next question is quality. This boils down to two key items, tailoring and fabric. The ultimate in quality is a bespoke suit. A bespoke suit is made by hand by a professional tailor. On the other end of the spectrum is a machine-made suit typically found at a discount store or mass-market suit store. There is a huge quality, look and style difference between a $5,000 bespoke suit and a $100 big box suit. If you are buying to resell, you can win big knowing what to look for. Let's play the good, better, best, exceptional game. Real money can be made on the higher end. The higher quality the higher the profit margin is likely to be reselling second hand. If you are buying to resell I suggest skipping good brands. You might turn $10 into $50, but in this category there are ways to make a lot more. Better suits sell for a few hundred to a thousand dollars new. There can be good profit in them. These are partly machine and partly hand sewn. Fabrics tend to be a step up from basic brands. These are some $500 plus new brands to look for. Suit supply. Bonobos, Charles Tierwitt, Crew, Banana Republic, Ted Baker, Tommy Hilfiger, Brooks Brothers, Indochino, Hugo Boss. Best brands have high-end fabrics with a lot of hand sewing. These are $1,000 plus new suits. Some of these brands to look for. Armani, Loro Pina, Gucci, Versace, Brioni, Tom Ford, Z Zegna, Canali, Cornellini, Paul Smith. They offer high-quality materials, expert craftsmanship, and attention to detail resulting in suits that are both stylish and timeless. Exceptional is reserved for bespoke suits. They are or near 100% handmade for a specific person. Every part is thought through and assembled by hand. Fabrics are of the highest quality. Some high-quality semi-off-the-rack brands also make bespoke suits. Some popular bespoke men's suit brands include Brioni, an Italian fashion house. Huntsman, located in London. They have been making bespoke suits for men since 1849. Kitten, an Italian brand. Tom Ford, an American fashion designer. Ralph Lauren Purple Label. It is different than regular Ralph Lauren. Oswald Boateng, a British fashion designer. His suits feature bold colors and patterns. Richard James, a tailor in London. Edward Sexton, located on Beauchamp Place in London. Anderson and Shepard, on Old Burlington Street in London. If you find a bespoke suit from one of these brands, you can expect to make some money on the resale market. 
This list is by no means complete. There are many private tailors crafting amazing suits. These may do better on sites like Poshmark whose customer tends to be more sophisticated. It is also worth investing extra time in excellent photographs, detailed measurements and information. I have an amazing silk bespoke sports coat my brother-in-law gave me when he expanded out of it. The fabric and tailoring are amazing. Here is the magic secret to why there is so much profit potential in this category. There is a cap on what anyone is willing to pay for a suit in the thrift store. Precious few shopping for a thrifted suit know a lot about the details of a quality suit. To me that's why the better the suit the better the online resale profit margin. A few quick ways to identify bespoke or exceptional brand name items possibly worth thousands. Buttons are a big tell. Plastic buttons are almost always the first clue that a suit is cheaply made. Well-made suit buttons are often made of horn or corozo. Corozo is from a palm tree and may have a little color variation because it is a natural product. It takes a little practice, but look at a few and you will spot plastic buttons pretty fast. Make sure none are missing or chipped. It is very hard to find perfect matches. Stitching is a huge tell. The higher percentage of a suit that is hand-stitched the higher quality. Hand-stitching will have irregularities, where machine stitching is perfectly spaced. Look at the buttonhole stitching, especially on the lapel. Handmade will look irregular on the backside and the buttonhole will have been cut before being stitched. Machine made will be even on both sides and look similar. Buttonholes are generally cut after the stitching is put in. You will see excess fabric between the stitching and the cut. Next flip over the collar, how the backing material and front material are sewn tells a story. Then look at how the inside liner is sewn in. Here again, by hand will look substantially different than by machine. Also inside liners in quality suits is often silk and never man-made materials. Looking at how the sleeve and pant ends are sewn and any visible stitching will provide numerous quality clues. Along with tailoring, fabric is super important. Better labels will have better fabrics. Don't ignore a brand if it has the right fabric and is well-made. Wool is the most popular fabric for men's suits. It's durable, comfortable, and can be worn in a variety of temperatures. High-end wool fabrics are often made from merino wool, which is known for its softness and moisture-wicking properties. The Super Wool number indicates the quality of the wool. Super 150 and 180 are commonly used in luxury men's suits, while anything above Super 200 is considered quite rare and expensive. Super 120 to 140 is fairly common in better suits and still indicates quality. Mohair is a type of wool that comes from the Angora goat. It has a lustrous sheen and is known for its durability and resistance to wrinkles. Mohair suits are often more expensive than wool. Cashmere, my favorite, is a luxurious fabric that is known for its softness and warmth. Look for a 100% cashmere label. Mulberry silk is considered to be the highest quality silk for men's suits. It is produced by silkworms that are fed only mulberry leaves, resulting in a soft, smooth textured fabric. A silk fabric with a thread count of at least 200 is considered to be of high quality. Men's suits are sometimes made of a blend of fabrics like silk and wool in order to combine the best qualities of both material. Other fabrics like cotton or linen are also used but tend to be more everyday and may not be worth buying for resale. Man-made materials have not been popular in quality suits so far. Some fabric manufacturers are so well known for quality you will find their labels in suits. For example, Loro Pina & Co. is an Italian fabric maker world famous for the quality of their products. They are so good suit makers will add their label to indicate quality. If you see a label with this brand fabric maker you are onto something. Other well-known quality fabric manufacturers include Armina Gildo Zegna, Scabble, Dormuil, Vidal Barbaris Canonico. Another clue to quality is the country of origin. Italy, France, and other European countries are worth an extra look. Brands do mean something, but as noted above don't use that as your only measure of quality. Then there is made to measure which can be ordered online and are often made in China. They are normally partly machine made and partly hand sewn. Nothing wrong with them, just not the same quality and fit as a real bespoke suit. When you find a suit that fits several of these quality measures, you may have found a treasure, but still do your online research before making that investment. Always remember your job is to turn money into stuff, to turn that stuff into more money. That $5,000 suit was sold by Save a Suit a not-for-profit dedicated to working with veterans. This is a bit of an outlier as expensive suits donated to them are likely intentional high-value donations. Finding treasures like that is part of the fun of the hunt. Thanks for watching and listening. This episode written and produced by Tim Jeboer, thrift retailer, dedicated to the business of resale. You can find him on LinkedIn. He would love to connect. Voice over and video via Descript.